Good morning, folks. I thought I would do a video today. Um, well, I'm going to take Mercy on a walk in the snow. It snowed last night for the first time this year here in Arizona, and I just thought I'd kill two birds with one stone and try and shoot a video while uh, I have a dog on a leash in the other hand. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, give you a little tour of my hood. So this is the secret door that I built so I could get to the water over here without going up the block and back down the block. You can tell that I built it because the hinges are a little crooked. <laughs> Good! So see if you uh, close it from this side you can hardly see where it is except the snow makes it a little more obvious because it's missing a piece. This is just a vacant lot. I'm lucky to have a lot behind my house. Mercy's sniffing some little tracks. There's Indian Road. Indians really live on Indian Road, believe it or not. Yavapai Apache Indians. This pedestrian bridge they built after about a year of me living here, didn't used to be here, but it's really nice because there's no, uh, there was no borders to cross the regular bridge. No uh, sides to it. Down here we have Wet Beaver Creek. Yep, that's really what it's called, Wet Beaver. It is called that because it's opposed to Dry Beaver Creek, which is uh, another one nearby that doesn't always have water in it, as you might imagine. Now this is Sycamore Community Park. So I got food poisoning the other night from eating raw salmon that... I got this salmon specifically because it was sushi grade salmon meant to be eaten raw. Usually I just eat the shitty stuff that's frozen at the grocery store raw and never had food poisoning before in my whole life. And I'm not a clean person or a careful person. I used to eat roadkill and all kinds of things and uh, finally caught up to me with this one batch of wild Alaskan salmon. Um, so yesterday I was sick all day on the couch, but today I'm feeling pretty much back to normal. So we're going down to the stream, which is basically where I filmed the last video, but I didn't have the water in the shot, so today I'll show you the water. There was a whole summer where uh, my water heater in the house was broken and I didn't fix it because I was super into like natural living and rewilding that summer and I uh, was trying to avoid the chemicals that are in the tap water here. There's a lot of arsenic, a lot of chlorine, and uh, not that there's not arsenic in the natural water. There's arsenic in the natural water as well, so that may, might not be a reason, but anyway, I came down here a couple times a week to this swimming hole and went swimming during that time and uh, used that for all my bathing needs. So this is actually a really pretty deep hole behind me. It's maybe neck deep. Um, it's got fish in it that you can I'll almost eat. So maybe like seven inch fish or so, not too big. Uh, even though I've been talking about moving, I actually love living in central Arizona landscape and climate wise. The climate's great. I'm never too annoyed by it. It's not as hot as it is down in Phoenix or Tucson. It's not as cold as it is up in Flagstaff and not as boring. <laughs> Personally, I find the uh, never-ending ponderosa pine forests and kind of grassy meadows up there kind of boring. There's not no water. I live right in the middle 
of the state, smack dab in the middle, Verde Valley. And the best thing about it is that there is a lot of water. There's a lot of different streams, a lot of places to go swimming. You've got Beaver Creek, Oak Creek, um, Clear Creek, Verde River, and with the exception of the Verde River, they're all clear and beautiful. And yes, the local way to pronounce things is Verde, like rhymes with dirty, not verde, like you might say in a Spanish. The other great thing about living in the center of the state besides all the water is you have access to a variety of different ecosystems because uh, basically the elevation rises gently from down in Phoenix to uh, all the way up to 7,000 feet in uh, Flagstaff and then 12,000 feet at the top of uh, San Francisco Peaks up there. And so right where I live, right now on today, I could go up the hill an hour, get on the ski lift at the snowball and, you know, be skiing. And, uh, or I could go down the valley an hour and uh, there would be down to Black Canyon City, which is uh, about 50 miles from here. And there'd be orange trees that I could pick oranges from. With that, you get the changes in vegetation. Like I said, up north, there's mostly ponderosa pines and um, like grassy savannas. A little bit farther down, there's a lot of, like 4,000 feet, there's a lot of juniper, juniper savanna. Right where I live with the water, there's all these riparian zones like we were just in with big sycamore trees, cottonwood trees. And of course, when you go a little bit farther south, you get the saguaro cactuses and barrel cactuses and uh, the sort of true desert that people imagine when they imagine the Arizona desert. And then the next layer of that is the geology changes incredibly. To the north we have the Mogollon Rim, which is kind of a big drop off where it suddenly rises to a uh, thousand feet or so, 2,000 feet, not sure how much, 2,000 I'd say. And uh, it's kind of sheer cliffs, it's very sudden. To my west, there's a Sedona area with the super duper red rocks. Basically just any direction you go, the, the rocks and the geology change dramatically in just a very short time. So it's never the same, it never uh, gets boring. So I hope you've learned something about where I live and what it's like to live in central Arizona and hopefully the video's not too bouncy and making you sick and all that. <laughs>